It's about my parents. And uh, I don't even know if my dad has heard this yet, but my mom has ever heard this place. Call Mama told me stories about my parents and about coming from Sukhmai and, and making it here and being successful and uh, raising three beautiful kids. Oh, two beautiful ones, I guess. I'm the ugly one. Shouts to Andy and Anthony. Love you guys. Love the rest of you guys. I see a lot of family and friends here. If you guys have any sisters, brothers, cousins, mothers, or any type of siblings, say yeah! And if they're here, say yeah! I say I love you, Alex. I love you, Alex. Oh, y'all too sweet. Y'all too sweet. All right, <laughs> all right. So this is the poem. Bear with me. I haven't. I didn't memorize it because of the fact that I, I wrote this a few years back, and um, and uh, I just haven't recited it in a long time. So and apologize for my my, my voice right now. I'm sick. All these allergies and stuff. <laughs> but check it out. It's called Mama Told Me Story. Here we go. If you guys just wanna bear with me, be a little a little silent. And um, for all the older. Um, Cambodians, right elders, all the elders, um, I, I'm sure you guys can relate, all right? <clears throat> here we go. Understand right here, man. <laughs> Don't let her. <laughs> Mama told me a horror story when I was just a little young. And yeah, it involved monsters, killings, and guns. But it wasn't your ordinary horror story that you hear when you're young. It was about the reason she left Cambodia and had to run to different countries like Thailand. My fam almost didn't make it. But motivated to stay alive, they made it to the station and waited patient as the homeland was raided by their own people. Self-devoured by evil cowards to try to empower the country we called ours. And after hours and hours of murders, it was time to get out of the place. Get over to the States, at least we could be safe. Because the combination of human condensation and decrease in population made a proper statement that we will not make it alive if we survive here in the eyes of the devil. The odds are incredibly slim. So the next step to go is the West Samoa. At least we can rest, but never forget the rest, the rest of us left in the deaths of our family members, including granddaddy. He didn't make it because the mind he was blessed with, the heart he possessed, too smart for the rest, so they took him away until this day. Mama doesn't know if he's alive or in the grave. But calculating the ratio of those who survived in the percentile of how many are alive, most likely granddaddy is one of the 1.7 million or 27% of the population that died. Daddy told me a horror story when I was just a little young. And yeah, it involved monsters and killings and guns. But it wasn't your ordinary horror story that you hear when you're young. It was about the reason why he left Cambodia and had to run. The monster was Paul Pot. The killings were endless and the guns blasting everlasting. See, Daddy had a heart problem and a couple younger brothers and sisters and a loving mother assisted by a knowledgeable and wise father who loved to preach and teach to reach the minds of his fellow people. But remember, Education was equivalent to execution, and that consisted of starvation around a bullet to your body, your head to a tree, or electrocution, because they despised the evolution of our people, so their solution was to execute them. But with a mind full of knowledge and the wisdom of a farmer, he proceeded to take his family farther away from all of the pain his possibility and determination would allow him to. Now being temporary residents of a jungle and sleepless nights caused them to wish they could sleep and dream of life and see the light that was once given to them. And then that dream blurs, and the reminder of the nightmare that occurs within a few miles away. Finally became fellow inmates at a refugee camp and made it to the USA because daddy had a heart problem and needed a good doctor. Came to the famous Mayo Clinic right here in Rochester. But it still sends chills down my spine, knowing that the mountains of bones could have very well been one of your own. How can you walk with a smile down an aisle of skeletons of men, women, children, civilian, knowing those are your own people and you killed them? That could have been your uncle, aunt, niece, nephew, cousin, or mother, or even your father, sister, or brother, your own flesh and blood. Instead, you feel refreshed by the sensation of eliminating the blood out of the flesh of your own flesh and blood. How can you sleep with yourself, knowing that you rule lives of many? Because if you kill even one individual, you cause causing pain and suffering and agony for the family, so actually the casualty of that one individual could be defined as a tragedy. See, this attempted genocide of generations helped open my eyes to the revelations of my family and what we've become. And to have the knowledge of why my parents really are so proud of me, likewise, I'm so proud to be the oldest son. Mama told me a story. Thank you guys, baby. Love you guys. Rochester.